The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. <laughs> Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out across the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and, and make our visit. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. <laughs> the, the yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes. The yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes. Licked its tongue into the corners of the evening. Lingered upon the pools that stand in drains. Let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys, slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing that it was the soft October night, curled once about the house and fell asleep. And indeed there, there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon the window panes. There will be time. There will be time uh, to prepare a face, to meet the faces that you meet. There will be time to, to murder and, and create, and, and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you, and time for me, and, and time yet for a hundred indecisions, and, and for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of a toast and tea. In the room, the, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo, and, and indeed there will be time to wonder, do I dare, and, and do I do I dare? T time to turn back and descend the stair with a with a bald spot in the in the middle of my hair. They will say, how his hair is growing thin. <laughs> my morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to the chin. My necktie, rich and modest, but asserted by a simple pin. They will say, but how his arms and legs are thin. <sighs> Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute, there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse. For I've known them all already, known them all. have known the evenings, mornings, afternoons. I have measured out my life with Coffee spoons. I know the voices dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a further room. So how should I presume? And 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 I've known the eyes already, known them all. The eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. And when I am formulated, sprawling on a pin, when I am pinned and, and wriggling on the wall, then, then how should I begin to spit out all the butts ends of my days and ways, and, and, and how should I presume? And I have known the arms already, known them all, arms that are braceleted and white and bare, but in the lamplight, downed with light brown hair, is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress? Arms that lie along a table, or wrap about a shawl. And should I then presume, and, and, and how shall I begin? Shall I say, I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows. I should have been a pair of ragged claws, scuttling across the floors of silent seas. And the afternoon, the evening, sleeps so peacefully, smoothed by long fingers, asleep, tired, or it malingers stretched on the floor, here beside you and me. Should I, after tea and cakes and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? 
<sighs> but though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I've seen my head, grown slightly bald, brought in upon a platter, I am no prophet, and, and here's no great matter. I have I've seen the moment of my greatness flicker, and I've seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker, and in short, I was afraid. And would it have been worth it after all? After the cups, the marmalade, the tea, among the porcelain, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worth while to have to have bitten off the matter with a smile, to have squeezed the universe into a ball, to roll it towards some overwhelming question, to say, "I am Lazarus, come from the dead, come back to tell you all, I shall tell you all if one settling a pillow by her head should say, "That is not what I meant at all, that is not it at all and would it have been worth it, after all? Would it have been worthwhile? After the sunsets and the dooryards and the sprinkled streets, after the novels, after the teacups, after the skirts that trail along the floor and this and so much more. <sighs> it is impossible to say just what I mean. But as if a magic lantern threw the nerves and patterns on a screen, would it have been worthwhile if one settling a pillow or throwing off a shawl and, and turning towards the window should say, that is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all. <sighs> no, I, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. I'm an attendant lord, one that will do to... Swell a progress, start a scene or two, advise the prince, no doubt, an easy tool, deferential, glad to be of use, politic, cautious and meticulous, full of high sentences, but a bit obtuse, at times, indeed, almost ridiculous, almost at times, the fool. Grow old. Grow old. I, I shall, I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare to eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk upon the beach. I've heard the mermaids singing, each to each. I do not think that they will sing to me. I've seen them riding seaward on the waves. Combing the white hair of the waves blown back when the wind blows the water white and black. We have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed with seaweed, red and brown, till human voices wake us and we drown. I love T.S. Eliot, but I think he makes beautiful metaphors but I do you think this is the ultimate incel poem because it's about someone who's so paralyzed by fear and trapped by what's expected of him and and also what might happen to him if he fucks up like um that he might be mocked or derided especially by women like in this in this poem specifically Mm, it's sad because it's not only a, a male experience, it's not only an incel experience. You can get scared of the consequences of the real world so that you start making up imaginary conversations in your head with people that you know that would be great, if, but except it relies on them to say the perfect thing, when in reality life is messy and it's often hurtful. And... It's emotional and weird and made of hormones swirling around in your brain, which is basically just a lump of meat with electricity zapping through it. So it's a complicated, messy, meat-based process. But um, I feel like this poem is for anyone who, I guess these days they say maladaptive dreaming. Um, they didn't have that when I was a kid, but I totally understand what they mean. 
wanting to live somewhere else where your scripted reality makes sense and where people look at your inner thoughts and go, oh my gosh, you're so deep and mysterious. I know it's one that people often do in schools, but I don't think it's a good poem for teenagers. It's a poem about someone who's trickled away his entire life. And I think you can only feel that after a certain point. It reminds me maybe of the middle-aged men that I meet on dating apps who have like a profile picture of the sky or whatever and say something about being discreet and I'll be like you're married aren't you and he'll say yeah but you know my wife she's frigid and we don't we get along great kids and stuff but you know there's no spark or fire anymore and I think that's weird because I was like, well, it's like she's become a human person to you and not not any of the fantasies <laughs> that are in your head. Um, I don't, I am very against cheating. So I just talk to them for a little bit because I think it's interesting. And then I say, sorry, chum, maybe consider having an open relationship or something. But yeah, I think... Uh, the poem has the sense of quiet desperation that can only be achieved by stuffing your feelings down year over year, day over day, second over second. And I hope that people find the courage to break out of their own holding patterns. Do something different. Go crazy. Learn lo yodeling. Um, you're late. Ooh, <laughs> that's it for me. <laughs> I'm laughing now. Goodbye. <laughs>